Foreign Minister Maurice Payne, thanks for your time. On the 30th of August this year, you and your Defence Minister counterpart released a communique after talks with the French Foreign Minister and Defence Minister. Both sides, and I'm reading from this communique, both sides committed to deepen defence industry cooperation and enhance their capability edge in the region. Ministers underline the importance of the future submarine program. That was part of the communique, Minister. Can you see why the French are aggrieved? Well, the 2 plus 2 is a, is a very important uh, meeting uh, between Australia and France and this was the first of those meetings, Kieran, and it needed to uh, discuss the full range uh, of the relationship, which is, after all, uh, a very broad one and broader than, uh, than the future submarine program itself. Uh, there had been no decisions made, of course, uh, at that time. And uh, Australia is, uh, is very focused, as you would expect, and as you would expect a government to be, on our national security. And I don't think uh, removing oneself from a meeting of, uh, of that nature, uh, while uh, no decisions had been made, was an appropriate thing to do. Uh, and indeed, reviewing all of the issues that go across the full breadth of the relationship was a very important part of that discussion. That said, though, Kieran, I have said publicly, and I would reiterate now, uh, that of course we understand, and I personally understand, the deep disappointment that France uh, feels given the decision we have had to make in relation to the future submarine program. Uh, and uh, we will need to work very hard, and I've also acknowledged that, uh, in moving forward and past this point uh, in our relationship with France. Ambassador Thibault yesterday at the press club was scathing about that meeting and this communique, was there scope for you and the Defence Minister to give the French some sort of heads up here? Well, I think that you've seen in the Prime Minister's comments uh, and uh, in, uh, in some reports, uh, that there had been a number of conversations uh, between Australia and France uh, in relation to the strategic environment in which we find ourselves, the uh, very, very uh, fast changes that we are dealing with here in the Indo-Pacific, uh, the challenges that that, uh, that provides uh, in terms of capability and including submarine capability. Uh, so certainly those matters had been discussed over time. What I do think it's important for us to do now is to uh, acknowledge the full breadth of the Australia-France relationship to work through this issue uh, and to make sure that uh, we continue what has been a very positive and cooperative uh, uh, set of um, arrangements and activities, uh, particularly in the Indo-Pacific. France is an Indo-Pacific nation uh, and we have uh, a great deal of history behind us, a great deal of future ahead of us, uh, notwithstanding this very significant uh, difficulty. I heard uh, some of what the Ambassador had to say yesterday. Uh, they're his words, but I had a very constructive uh, conversation uh, for over an hour with him, uh, person to person uh, in Sydney on Monday uh, as well. Uh, a meeting which uh, we are certainly uh, both agree to use as the basis uh, for the work that we will do going forward. I know you say that the meeting with your French counterpart was a, a broad discussion across a range of issues. Ambassador Thibault says it's more than just the subs, though. It's about their sharing of top-secret information. He believes that this is a breach of what was a growing strategic partnership. Can you see his argument on that? And I've said that I understand um, the deep disappointment that, uh, that France feels. And uh, I know that um, President Macron and Prime Minister Morrison uh, had a conversation in relation to these matters uh, just before the Prime Minister went uh, to the G20 leaders meeting and to, uh, to COP26. I've also sought, uh, as I said uh, publicly last week, uh, in relation to a conversation with, uh, with the French Foreign Minister, uh, to, to do that as well. Uh, we will work very hard with our counterparts understanding their disappointment, but importantly being acutely aware of the full breadth of the Australia-France relationship. As I said, the history that stands behind that, including a very, very difficult shared history in World War I, but what is also ahead of us and the focus that we need to have, particularly in relation to the security and the stability of the Indo-Pacific region and more broadly where, where we are able to work together. Underpinning what you're saying here, though, about the Indo-Pacific is China, the rising and more aggressive China. Is this spat now an own goal in that sense on the issue of strategic influence in our region with China growing as it is? 
So, so Kieran, I think perhaps we would miss the point completely if we ignored the fact that uh, the premise of uh, the decision that uh, Australia made was uh, our agreement to participate in an extremely important trilateral partnership with the United Kingdom and the United States, the AUKUS, and everything that is within that partnership. Everything that is within that partnership, whether it is the technology sharing arrangements, whether it is the work that we will do on quantum computing and cyber and artificial intelligence, on other undersea capability and of course the acquisition of nuclear powered submarines themselves. Everything we will do in that partnership, we do acutely cognizant of the challenges that we face uh, in the Indo-Pacific uh, from a range of vectors. But importantly, we see an unprecedented rate of military acquisition and military modernisation. Uh, we see an unprecedented level of uh, issues around security and stability that we are working closely on with all of our partners, our partners in the Pacific, our partners in ASEAN and across Asia more broadly, our partners in the Quad, our partners in the G20 and the G7 Plus. And all of those relationships are core to what we do in our region and importantly what we're able to contribute to our region in working with, uh, with all of those uh, individual countries bilaterally and of course in those groupings that I've mentioned. You've said many times to me and to others you don't share private communications with your international colleagues. Now, the government, or the Prime Minister or his staff, releasing a text message from Macron to Morrison. Was that a mistake in Diplomacy 101? I'm not going to comment on a text message of which I have no particular knowledge, but claims were made and claims were refuted. I think the most important thing for us now is to ensure as a government and as a nation uh, that uh, we are absolutely focused on our national security, uh, on uh, prosecuting Australia's national interests in the decisions that, uh, that we are making. The Prime Minister has uh, made a clear statement on this and I'm very focused, including on uh, uh, with our counterparts in the United States. I had a very productive phone call with Secretary of State uh, Tony Blinken this morning. Very focused on what we are going to be doing into the future under AUKUS itself. But as I said, across those range of partnerships uh, that I mentioned, the OSMIN that we just held in Washington uh, only a month ago, although it seems uh, a lot longer now, uh, that OSMIN itself was uh, one of the most substantive meetings between Australia and the United States uh, that sets the ground for a lot of that future work and that's certainly something I discussed with Secretary of State Blinken this morning. Malcolm Turnbull says this whole episode has undermined the trust not just in the Prime Minister but the government which should be a national security asset. What's your assessment of what the former PM is saying? Does he have a point? Uh, well, those words are a matter for him, and I think the Australian people will make their own judgment about that. Uh, what we are focused on is the partnerships that we have, that we are working uh, with others uh, in terms of our pursuit, as I've said, of sec security and stability uh, in the Indo-Pacific. And uh, the call that I had uh, this morning with the Secretary of State, a uh, number of calls that I've had with counterparts in recent uh, days and weeks, whether they are from Europe or Southeast Asia or the Pacific, goes to the those partnerships uh, and relationships uh, and they are those Relationships are what make uh, the work that we do so important across the region, the investment that we make uh, both in, uh, in Australia's interests but in the interests of the region itself, uh, so powerful. And I am very confident that uh, as we work through the development of AUKUS itself, uh, as we work closely through the implementation of our comprehensive strategic partnership now agreed by ASEAN leaders, the ASEAN Australia CSP is the first CSP that ASEAN uh, has ever agreed. As we work through those, uh, we will be very much focused on contributing to security and to stability uh, in this region, in the Indo-Pacific, the most dynamic region on the planet in 2021, uh, where opportunity is enormous, but where contributions to security and stability are absolutely vital. Back to what the French ambassador said yesterday. He said, love is good, but the proof of love is much better. Uh, obviously, it's a difficult moment in the relationship, but do you think he should have reflected more on the history, the battlefields in his own country where so many Australians may pay the ultimate sacrifice for 
his country's freedom? Uh, well, of, of course, these matters are, uh, are a matter for the ambassador. I know that uh, in 2018, uh, the centenary of the end of World War I, I was in villers bretonneux I was in Bilcourt, I was on the Western Front, uh, or the area of the Western Front, uh, and particularly moved, particularly struck by uh, the depth and the history of those aspects of the Australia-France relationship. And I know how many Australians feel that. I know how many uh, members of, uh, of the uh, French population feel that. And I know that the leaders uh, both uh, reflect on that as well. But ultimately, as I said, I think in response to your first or second question, uh, as well as reflecting on that history, uh, my focus is also on the future and on what we are uh, able to do together, both as bilateral partners and more broadly. This has been, and I understand that, a very disappointing uh, decision that Australia has taken in our national interests. We will work closely with our partners in France uh, to ensure that uh, we are responding uh, and we are engaging with them on the things that are important going forward. Finally, Foreign Minister, a quick question on the climate talks. Why did you not attend? Wasn't that a chance to manage the international fallout, the expectations among our international counterparts? Well, not so much a decision not to go, uh, Kieran, as uh, Team Australia being very well represented by the Prime Minister himself and, of course, by the Minister for Industry, uh, Energy and Emissions Reduction, uh, Angus Taylor. Uh, I had uh, just recently engaged with uh, a range of, uh, of my counterparts, uh, as I think you're aware, uh, in, a, in visits to India, to Indonesia, uh, to uh, Korea uh, and ultimately to the United States and, of course, attending uh, UNGA Leaders Week, where uh, many of my counterparts uh, were also present and had the opportunity to, uh, to meet with them. Uh, in the coming days, I'm heading into Southeast Asia, a chance to visit uh, our colleagues and counterparts in Malaysia, in Cambodia, in Vietnam uh, and in Indonesia uh, as part of uh, the work that we do across the region and also particularly that acknowledgement of ASEAN's uh, decision to uh, accord Australia uh, a comprehensive strategic partnership. Uh, that won't be the last Last travel uh, I do this year, and uh, certainly the work that you refer to of, uh, of the Foreign Minister is, uh, is well ongoing. Uh, but I think Team Australia well led by the Prime Minister at the, the G20 leaders and at the COP26. Foreign Minister Maurice Payne, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks so much, Kieran. Great to see you.